There have been recent label updates to two powerful MS medicines, Gelenia and Lemtrada. In this video, I'm going to share my own personal opinions on how those changes impact MS care and how to mitigate risks. If you'd like to hear my answers, stay tuned because that starts right now. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between clinic visits. And it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Recently, several of you have commented asking my opinions on the recent updates to both the Lemtrada and the Gelenia label. And I thought I would take a few minutes and share with you my own personal opinions. As some of you are aware, in the Gelenia label, there's an update reminding folks that when you stop Gelenia, there's a risk of a rebound. Rebound is where you stop an MS drug and then the disease activity rebounds worse than its baseline for a period of time. This can involve a clinical attack, including a multifocal attack where you have more than one bad thing happening at one time or and new spots on the MRI. Now, I'll share with you our own personal experience here at Ohio Health where we have had literally hundreds upon hundreds of people with relapsing MS on these medications. Uh, by way of background, I was a clinical trials investigator for almost all of the trials that led to the approval of Gelenia, and I've been using it in clinical practice since 2010 when it was FDA approved. My point here is, is I've had a lot of patients on Gelenia, we've had a lot of people go on to the drug, and we've had a lot of people come off the drug. Now here's my own personal opinion. I believe that the risk for rebound can probably be mitigated by making a quick transition off of Gelenia onto a different product. When we switch someone off of Gelenia, we don't want to wait and wait and wait. We want to be as tight between stopping Gelenia and starting the next drug as possible. Sometimes this can be tricky because as you recall, the way Gelenia works is it traps 80% of your white blood cells in your lymph nodes. When you stop the drug, over the subsequent month or two months, those cells leave the lymph nodes back into the bloodstream. And so we typically transition people as follows. First, stop Gelenia. Second, transition onto the next drug as quickly as possible, typically within one, no more than two months. If there is a delay for any reason, we give a pulse, a single dose of IV steroids once monthly to bridge between the Gelenia and the next drug. Now we've done this with hundreds of people and anecdotally we have not had any rebound. It doesn't mean that we couldn't have rebound. It doesn't mean that's a foolproof plan and it always works. But it does mean with hundreds and hundreds of people transitioned off Gelenia here in Central Ohio, we've had great success. And I hope that we continue to have great success. Obviously, this is something that you have to talk to your provider about. And if you're on Gelenia and you need to come off and you're concerned, don't be. Go talk to your provider. Come up with a strategy, maybe like the strategy we use, so that you can feel confident and comfortable leaving your Gelenia onto a different drug. I'll now turn my attention to the update on the Limtrada label. And as many of you are aware, last week an update came out reminding us that there is a risk of strokes, specifically bleeds and arterial dissections. Now those are scary, scary terms. Now we at Ohio Health have infused over 200 people with multiple sclerosis using Lemtrada. The vast majority have gone through two doses and a handful in fact have gone through three doses. We learned early on that managing blood pressure is critically important in successful infusion of Lemtrada. And as it has always stated in the label, there is a risk of high blood pressure during the infusion. It's our experience and our strong opinion that you can mitigate the risk by managing blood pressure appropriately during the infusion. I'm talking about doing solid infusion medicine, watching blood pressure like a hawk, and if it starts to elevate from that person's baseline, responding with medicines to bring it back down. It's my strong opinion that by applying excellent infusion medicine and by managing blood pressure carefully, we can largely mitigate these risks of hemorrhagic stroke, which are caused by malignant hypertension in the setting of the infusions. I also want to point out that we're not seeing strokes weeks and weeks after Lemtrada. It's happening proximal to the infusion, which further gives credence to my recommendation as being a great mechanism to mitigate the risk. Once again, my name is Aaron Boster, and thank you for learning about MS with me. 
These are my own personal opinions. They don't make me right, they just make me opinionated. I do have a tremendous amount of clinical experience, both in research clinical trials and in clinical practice with these two medications, and I hope that my opinions and impressions have given you food for thought. Make sure that you're talking to your MS provider about what's right for you. And until my next video, take care.